as an extension to our last question about whether films can be better than the books, what about 2001 A Space Odyssey where the film and book were written at the same time? What are your thoughts there? I think that the film is, it strays into art house. It's more of a vehicle for special effects and it created so many firsts in the field of special effects. But the book, I feel, works slightly better because it's able to explain more. Um, so I, I'd say that the, the book is better. Well, I, I think it's a bit of an oddity. I think it's the example where the story is there and then the book does its version because you can't book a film and uh, the film does its version because you can't film a book. Hmm. It takes different aspects of this main story that's going through both and expands the bits that film works best on and expands the bits that book works best on and retracts the other bits. Hmm. So you get two different versions of the same thing. Now, here's one that's interesting for you. I'm just going to throw this out there because it's, it's a book that I do enjoy a lot. Joe Millard's The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Um, mm. And it's it's the book... Um, I'm, I think they were written about the same time as the film, possibly just before, possibly just afterwards. But when you read the book, it's um, what it shows is that it is possible to make a very good film very close to a book, or certainly make a book very close to a film. Um, and it's it's only quite a short book, actually. And when you think well, that, that helps. Well, the film's about two and a half hours long. Um, so it's quite a long film, but that translates down into a book that's quite a thin book. But it's interesting that the book contains extra bits that flesh out the story, which when I looked on the DVD... The 17 minutes of footage that was cut from the theatrical release that does still exist is actually scenes that are in the book. <laughs> and it's very interesting because you can place exactly where those scenes were supposed to go. And it's, um, I'm just throwing it out there because it's incredibly that the two were very close to each other and the film is excellent and so is the book. In a similar circumstance, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. <laughs> is basically a film version of six graphic novels. I thought he sold the film rights before he'd even finished the Before project. he'd finished the final book, I think. How do how do people where where do you where do you send your stuff to get get Well you've got to remember that way. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was six graphic novels. Yes. And he'd released at least four of them. I think it may have been five by the time the film was picked up. So they knew what the story was. They knew that it was good. They knew that it had been popular amongst comic readers. So it was a no-brainer to try and adapt this into a film. Yeah. But it's interesting the way they did it because the film pretty much condenses, like I was saying with uh, the Lovecraft one, it condenses the uh, story into a film script but keeps a lot of the visual aspects mm. of the comic style by incorporating them into visual aspects on the film. Yeah. So... It's like they filmed a comic, but not. So right. I think in that situation, the film enhances the story rather than just adapts. 